about two weeks ago, a very interesting lawsuit overseas about cookies is what we're going to call it, uh, came out. Uh, but before we get to that, let's start with tubbies, fatties. I'm one of them. Arguably, Woo! no offense, the majority of this panel, a little chubby. We could use some work around the edges. Uh, sorry, Connor and Humberto, but you guys are I, relatively I normally wear thinning. black for a reason, <laughs> You're Rob. representing the skinny group. Uh, yeah, so we have the skinnies and the tubbies here. And it's, but, uh, you know, we're ashamed. That's the main thing. Yes, okay. Uh, <laughs> so because you're ashamed and you hate being fat. It's all good. But, we, but it's we're all not good. alone. And I, I don't know if that's good or bad. According to the World Health Organization, at least 2.8 million people die each year due to being overweight or obese. In the United States, the, estimate number, uh, the estimated number of annual deaths from being fat, 280,000 to 400,000 people. That's a lot of people. Solid amount. That's like uh, a lot of 9-11s. They yep. used to, there was a thing going on a few years ago where they would compare the amount of 9-11s it would take to reach the death, death toll. toll. That, that's a lot of 9-11s for obesity. Yes. Uh, it's actually the second leading cause of preventable death in the United States. You guys want to take a guess as to what's the first? Car uh, heart disease? No, no. Mm. Uh, gun the view guns no not the view suicide from the view <laughs> so we're combining yes. guesses uh, it's actually themselves? and this is odd to me because I don't see that this much anymore but smoking I was yes. going to say that uh, but then I thought no I mean, people are over that now but no because um, the I it's very odd when I see somebody smoking these days I'm like that guy's hardcore because everybody <laughs> vapes now it's very rare that I drive by and I see a younger person standing outside mm -hmm. in the rain smoking a stogie like we used to have to do with parliament lights ooh yeah, I was a Newport guy. guy. Yeah. You were a Newport guy. Then, Newport? I, then, I, then I switched over to the lighter Marlboro Reds. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so you went from <laughs> stereotypical urban cigarette to redneck cigarette Just real quick. For it. I had to, both sides of the what, What's a camel guy? I don't even think those guys exist anymore. They've been we, replaced with Virginia Slims We successfully guys. bred them out, but you know. I, All right, I'm a camel guy. As they say, the uh, the side effects of smoking are cancer and looking cool. So now you know they, they're 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 hardcore if they're if they're ripping a cigarette now. Uh, the World Health Organization. Back to obesity. There's actually an obesity epidemic uh, from the World Health Organization. They say that uh, obesity is one of the most blatantly visible yet most neglected public health problems. They've actually coined a term for it uh the global epidemic of overweight and obesity is called globesity awesome. globesity because it's Glo a global <laughs> epidemic awesome. you not not because you're the size and shape of a globe you know? <laughs> no, that, <laughs> maybe that's why they that, did it though. that seems offensive now Fat imagine phobic. imagine a world where we have this this awful epidemic where people are dying from it and uh, again 300 to 400,000 people dying from being obese. Now imagine that in order to combat this obesity epidemic that we have there is a rush to combat globesity and a company, we'll call them Keebler, creates a sugar-free cookie that gets rushed through the taste testing trials and goes immediately on the market as a problem or as a solvent to the problem of tubbies. Uh, at first, it's recommended that everybody eats these sugar-free cookies. Hey, Robert O'Rourke, you're not chubby, but guess what? You should eat these cookies, too. It's going to help the people who are overweight yes. feel less like they should uh, be embarrassed to eat these sugar-free cookies. Connor, we're eating the sugar-free cookies. Humberto, we're eating the sugar-free cookies because we're overweight and we need to. But skinny people, it's recommended that you guys eat these sugar-free cookies. remember when they, when they said, yeah, when they said exactly. if, you, if you ate the sugar-free cookie, solidarity. they'd give you free burgers and pizza and hot dogs and donuts and everything to yes. reward you yes. for yeah. getting the sugar-free cookie. That was my favorite. Cookie. Get a free cheeseburger. So, so there's a Australia. public health <laughs> crisis. People are dying. Oh, but eat this burger that's grilled and fat. Well, and so this is like a gas or gas type of situation. Yes. Correct. Yes. <laughs> uh, it's so bad. The CDC, FDA, and the World Health Organization all agree that everybody should eat the cookies, even if you're not fat. The problem is not everybody eats the cookies. People are skeptical of the cookies. Hey, well, how did they do in the taste testing trials? Oh, there weren't taste testing trials? Well, I don't know if I want to eat the sugar-free cookies cookies becomes a problem, right? Because now we're not able to combat the obesity epidemic because not enough people are eating the sugar-free cookies. Rob, you're killing people by not eating the <laughs> sugar-free cookies. Do you not care about Nana? And eat so, the so, sugar-free cookies. To all you uncookied people, there is a winter of destruction.
destruction and death <laughs> coming your way. A dark winter. You need to stay away from Thanksgiving and Christmas until you eat your cookies. Well, so here's what happens. Not enough people eat the cookies, so the narrative overnight changes from you should eat the cookies to now you must eat the cookies. In fact, if you don't eat the cookies, uh, you're not going to be allowed to go to the gym. In order to go to the gym, you're going to need a cookie passport so you can show that I have had my daily consumption of sugar-free cookies. I'm allowed to be in this establishment. But it goes further than that. People start losing their jobs. It becomes a mandate that you must eat these cookies. If you don't eat these cookies, then you're no longer, for whatever reason it is, you're going to be banned from public events. You're going to now lose your job, and you're also going to lose your health benefits because you're not eating cookies during the obesity epidemic. And it becomes one of the leading reasons why people leave their jobs. In fact, here's a November 5th, 2021 article. Again, this is all just hypothetical. But this is a November 5th hypothetical ar uh, article from ABC7 in which they say, cookie refusal, the 10th highest reason for job cuts in 2021. And then there's a December hypothetical 2021 New York Times article entitled, see where 12 million U.S. employees are affected by government cookie mandates, where at least four 49,000 Americans had resigned from their jobs because of cookie mandates and their protests to it. And then let's fast forward four years later. And it turns out that Keebler admits that it's sugar-free cookies could cause a rare but deadly blood clotting condition, potentially exposing the UK snacking giant to tens of millions, if not billions, in lawsuits brought on by loved ones of those who have been injured or killed as a result of the forced cookie mandate. Lawyers representing dozens of class action claimants say that some of their clients' cases could be worth as much as $25 million in damage calling Big Cookie's product a defective product. Keebler then contests the claims, acknowledging in a February legal document that its cookies can, in very rare cases, cause a condition called thrombosis with thrombobactopenia, a syndrome also known as TTS. Uh, so far in these cookie-related lawsuits, 51 cases have been filed, estimated to be worth $125 million in London's uh, high court uh, due to a bargain that Keebler struck with the UK government at the height of the obesity epidemic. Uh, this was a deal that was struck to indemnify the snack maker against potential lawsuits. They actually say that instead of Keebler being on the hook for any side effects of the cookies, uh, it may actually be the taxpayers who are going to be on the hook for payouts resulting from the claims. So that being wow. said, Don't four years removed. <laughs> what are your thoughts? Um, do you believe that there should be any type of repercussions or should there be lawsuits given or uh, paid favorably well, to people who are injured by Big Cookie? Absolutely. First of all, I haven't seen such great dancing since Footloose. Thank it's you. incredible. It's incredible. <laughs> Just like in the town of Footloose, they don't like it when we dance. <laughs> <laughs> but we dance anyway. Yeah, okay, uh, so what are you going to be, the John Lithgow of the podcast? That's uh, what YouTube wait. is. Jesus, who's Patrick Swayze? <laughs> I think it's great that um, there's a lot of people who are about to be vindicated, and it's, and it's also going to vindicate a lot of people who've been warning about this. So there is an adverse effects registry tab for cookies online that mm -hmm. you can read about. Yep. Um, you know, whether, you know, you're feeling a little bit sleepy, whether, um, you know, something serious happens, whenever somebody report something after eating the cookie it automatically gets put on this website but there isn't a whole lot of uh you know regulation behind it and for a lot of people they don't even see it as a credible source whatsoever so when i reference that when i've been in cookie debates with people they're like no that's that's not credible that's not real so i think that this is an opportunity for people who were affected by the cookie to get vindicated and then the people who've been speaking out about this they'll be able to to reference that now, as well Jokes aside, and this is serious, as a muffin supremacist, <laughs> okay, because that's the superior snack with your coffee, I don't think they will ever go far enough with vindication at all. They will never go far enough because I not only want everyone to know the side effects of having cookies, I want them to tell the world mm. that this was, this was fortune cookies. Mm. You know, <laughs> dark facts. <laughs> <laughs> they are so fortune good. cookies. <laughs> 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 
Uh, very you good got point. Robbed. You got robbed good on that one. And that's all, all I want to say. And we need to go to wow. war with fortune cookie makers because hmm. this this was a sweet attack <laughs> on our freedoms. Sweet... <laughs> like this is really okay. So to go down that rabbit hole of it being a deliberate cookie sabotage, right? Hmm. How many times do things have to be shown that were I, and I hate to use the term, but it's conspiratorial when you talk about it, right? We talk about, hey, there must be paid protesters in those. Why would there be people throwing bricks through storefront windows during Black Lives Matter? Now you flash forward to eight years later, and it's, hey, there's admittance that there's paid agitators in crowds. You look at uh, all of the activity of the World Economic Forum, George Soros, and you go, hey, that stuff's suspicious, and people have been calling it suspicious for a decade now. And all of a sudden, we come to, the, to, to today where it's, yes, George uh, Soros is actually paying for those protesters to go and infiltrate mm -hmm. he's also paid for certain members of congress he's lobbied congress and the senate so all of these things were taboo topics to talk about but then the more that we talked about them the more it turns out that there is some truth behind these taboo topics so that being one of them well whoever made these fortune cookies that made a lot of people fat will those people ever be held accountable or do they continue to just say no this was a, a totally separate thing that it wasn't baked that way it actually was created that way somewhere else rob i mean <laughs> what like a big cookie fan, you know, that, that was, you know, putting his hand in the wrong cookie jar. Mm -hmm. Harvey Weinstein is free to do whatever. So we can hold people accountable, do the whole thing. But I don't think we have the military power to actually back up those claims. We're spread thin because because this 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 cookie war, it could be like a world war. You know, like if we actually had to if we actually were able to help hold them accountable mm. to the level that we need to hold. Look, I'm going to tell you something really sad about the whole cookie thing. My grandfather, you know, I, I, my, one of my biggest inspirations and whatever, um, he worked until he was 97, okay, when, when the whole cookie debacle started. He was healthy as a horse. He would wake up every morning, go to his office, you know, um, do his lawyer stuff, you know, and he worked until 97, cookie crisis hit uh, when he was 97 and they killed my grandfather without even serving him cookies you know mm. so i'm i'm extremely bitter like and i'm gonna be bitter about them taking away my grandfather where i i couldn't even go to the funeral how many millions of more americans feel the exact same way that you do that lost somebody during that obesity epidemic and they want somebody to be held accountable and yet nobody is holding the fortune cookie maker accountable and th think mm -hmm. about even even more than that sorry for the, your loss Humberto. The, the, I, yeah. yeah the degree to which american bakers were involved in the fortune cookie operation before that even the, the obesity, obesity epidemic even got to us. Correct, there was a patent for it that you yeah. could actually read about publicly towards exactly. the end of 2019, correct? Yeah, American government mm. bakers, American business bakers, they were all involved in what was going on over where they make the fortune cookies. Mm -hmm. And no one's ever been held to account for that. So even as we get the word out there about the problems with the cookies, because, in every other case, you're supposed to know what goes into the cookie before you take the cookie. But when was the last time you heard about a cookie company being able to hide the recipe and the results of the kitchen trials for 75 years <laughs> after you're supposed to get it? Uh, the thing to do now is you go to the tree where the Keebler elves make their cookies. I'm aware where that is. Yeah. You chop down the tree, you drag the elves out and say, <laughs> you will be held accountable for this. Mm. But, but nobody <laughs> likes to do that because... It makes us feel icky because everybody loves elves. They're, 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 they're here to you help know, us. Look at all the good I things. I know one orange guy who does not love yeah, elves. They've done all these all. things in the past. <laughs> and he will drag all of them out from that tree one by one by but, himself. But you have to remember, orange guy was the one who greenlit the development of the sugar-free cookie in the first place. I don't know if the orange guy knew what he was greenlighting at that it's time. It's the same thing that you said, that, that 10 excuse? minutes beforehand, they told him, you know, no. they just, just give the cookies to the people. Mm -hmm. But we were, like, Viva Frey was here uh, a few days ago, and we are talking about baked goods in general. Yep. And, um, and you know, it, it called my attention that Monday of uh, last week or this week, I don't remember anyways, uh, there was articles posted about you know cookie you know related uh Injuries. you know mishaps yes uh 
It was released because, you know, I read, read the press in different languages. I saw an article in Spanish in two or three pu publications, one from Spain, one from Argentina, one from Chile. I wrote, I read the article in French as well in a Canadian publication. And Just so you know, I did not know that you've read all of these articles in different languages. You, you gotta, <laughs> when you start with, you know that I like to read articles you, in different gotta, languages. <laughs> I know that you're fluent in French as well. I, I, I can read, but I will never speak it because I hate the French. I'm sorry if you're French. You're the worst. I love you. And they're I thought the Norwegians were the worst. Huh? I thought Norwegians were the worst. Why do you always change your mind? Well, you know, what they're doing to my boys in Haiti and my boy Barbecue and how they've been treating them lately. Let them do their thing. Um, <laughs> but like you were saying. As I was saying, the press release, because it was a press release. Like, they cover us an article. Yeah. And since I've been, you know... In the mix of like running a publication, I know when things are paid, I know when things, they give it to you. And when you see an article in Quebec and you see an article in France and you see an article in Chile and you see an article here in the States at the same time about, you know, the bad things that happens when you, when, you know, when you dip into a cookie jar, uh, I think things might be hitting the fan on the inside because if they're willing to show that the little bit of thing, something's going to happen soon. That's my best guess. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that is the la and I won't speak too much on this because the last time I did, I got this channel a strike, so I'm going to be very, very <laughs> careful with what I'm saying right now. Talk this week. I got to stick with the cookie talk, and you guys are way too quick with the metaphors. I don't know if I can keep this up, but I'll say this. <laughs> when they say thrombosis, what they're saying is brain clot that stops you know your basically your brain from functioning properly this isn't like a rare thing and it's some weird latin word that we don't know what it is this is like your brain dying okay wow. so this is not a small thing i too lost mentors i lost grandparents i lost stuff during this time and uh you cannot ever take the fire away from me that would hang every single one of those executives that mm -hmm. thought this was a good idea You'll executives never, you'll, being cookie executives a, from at Keebler. Keebler. Yeah, at, th those Keebler folks, uh, they would never have a chance if I had any say in any of it. So go ahead. Maybe that's what's happening to those Colombia pro-Palestine protesters. They have thrombosis. <laughs> and their brains have just rotted <laughs> just away. Dying. Getting that, eaten that one, alive. Uh, that one yeah. black and white cookie guy from New York who made everybody take the sugar-free cookie, you're at the top of the list.